this is Overcoming Hate Setback Series. And so the title of this one is Haters Frame You as a Problem and Not as a Solution. Um, and I want to talk about this. Make sure to uh, listen to the introduction to the series because it links hate or haters with the idea that they don't want to change. That's why they tend to uh, continue and sustain their hate. Uh, I always remember that you are a solution to a problem. You're not a solution to every problem. Uh, and a lot of times that comes with your life assignment. If you think about it like this, and another minister is the one who, who sort of put me on to this, um, Dr. Mike Murdoch. Uh, he said uh, that uh, Moses was assigned to the children of Israel. However, Aaron was assigned to Moses. And then um, the particular life assignment was to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt into the promised land, right? And Aaron was to provide specific uh, spiritual direction, et cetera. And so once you understand who you are as an individual, what your gifts and talents are, um, you're going to get people who want to project you as a problem and not a solution. The reason why people do this, it's very simple, is because if you are a solution to a, a specific problem, then they have to actually accept the solution. They've been going around the mountain, the metaphorical mountain, mountain, the wilderness wanderings, trying to find a solution. Here, God brings you in as a solution. Hey, here, I'm a solution. God is using me as a solution. And they decide to walk past you and say, no, you are not a solution. You are a problem. Okay? They're trying to change your destiny. They're trying to change your, your uh, perception, right? They're trying to change not only your self-perception, how you see yourself in the mirror, right? They're trying to distort the perception of yourself in the mirror, and they're trying to distort the perception socially of other people. If they can, if they can change the minds of people and say, hey, she's not the solution to the problem, I am, or, or we, need, we need to find another, then what that does is, is, uh, withhold good from a person who needs it. Okay, let me think about it like this. Uh, Moses sends Joshua and Caleb and other men to go to the promised land, right, to spy it out, to see what is going on, okay, and to determine if they could advance, okay, uh, uh, the, the Philistines. And so Joseph and Caleb, after a time, returned and told Moses that the land is good, we can we can overtake it, okay? But the other people with them saw it as a different uh, thing. They saw the people as being too big for them. They saw them as giants, meaning that they saw themselves as small to them. And they gave a bad report. They said, no, we cannot overtake it, okay? Well, this causes their bad report affects everybody else in the camp. So that now God says, okay, you're not going to go into the promised land right now. You're going to go around this mountain for 40 years, uh, wilderness wanderings. And so then that's going to kill off the naysayers and anyone else who gave a bad report. And, and that also meant um, um, generationally as well. And so um, what they did was, that that bad report not only gave a bad perception of themselves that we cannot overtake it, but it also gave a bad perception of the, the promised land itself, that the inhabitants of the land, um, according to Joshua and Caleb, be overtaken. They saw something else. They saw that we can overtake them, that the land is ours. We might as well advance. That's what they saw. They saw the vision. They saw the vision of the promised land. 
But the naysayers, the ones who gave the bad report, didn't see the vision of the promised land. So that's interesting that they didn't see it as, um, I have to wonder, what did they see? What did they think they were doing while they were walking to the promised land? Did they not expect to go in? And that's, I have to think about it because if we're doing all this walking, eventually I want to get somewhere and sit down and rest. But I want to be careful that I don't get somewhere and sit down and settle. So what that means is that they were wanting to settle uh, in a place that they were not supposed to be. And they were kind of like in between because they were in between um, Egypt and the promised land, even though there were many, 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 many miles away from Egypt, but they were kind of like in between in terms of their mindset. They wanted to stay in Egypt because they understood Egypt. Egypt was, was predictable, even though they were beaten and mistreated, but, but it was predictable. However, the promised land is unknown, even if they are being guided by the Lord through, through Moses, but it's unknown. And so God is saying that the promised land is a solution to your Egypt mindset that you don't have to live in a country that tolerates you and people that mistreat you, that I'm giving you your own land and you can live however way you please in terms of peace, right? And so they saw, they saw the promised land, strangely enough, as a problem. And they saw Egypt as a solution. When God is telling them, no, the promised land is a solution. Egypt is a problem. So then you have to look at your, many of the decisions that you're making and determine whether or not uh, you are seeing it correctly. You are seeing it appropriately. Because anything that is wearing you down and tearing you apart and hurting you, that is not the promises of God. That is a problem. And God has a solution to the problem, but you have to be willing uh, to hear what it is through whomever God is using, right? But if you, but if you are a hater, you're gonna see everything that should be a solution as a problem, and everything that should be a problem as a solution. And so haters frame you as a problem and not as a solution when they are when they are misinterpreting. Um, the differences between problem and solution. So this is Overcoming Hate Setback Series. Haters frame you as a problem and not as a solution. Visit ReginaYFavors.com for more tips. Thank you very much for listening.